Oké, shalom, shalom. Kom je ze alle. Koholim la yahwa ba shim yahwa shai ba hashem rcha hachudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well, the by the spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwa. That's all here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Jachanan the Waft is coming at you with another quick, quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And just wanted to touch on, um, you know, the, the children of Israel and um, just basically the punishment that we're under as far as Deuteronomy 28, the curses that we're under as a people. And this is um, in Peru. It says hundreds of families mourn in Peru as children fall victim to a dengue outbreak. I've never heard of this before, but um, it says death toll mounts in northern Peru. Pi Pyra region after torrential rains and floods lead to worst ever epidemic. Okay, uh, let's see here. In the stream of white, mourners walk behind an ivory colored shoulder borne coffin as neighbors, heads bowed and hands clasped, peered out of doorways on the narrow street in Castilla, a middle class suburb in Pyra, northern Peru. At the gates of the San Jose de Tarbes school, dozens of girls wearing gray skirts and white skirts, white shirts with red ties awaited the cottage, holding white balloons and roses. It was a farewell for their schoolmate, Priscilla Quisp, seven, who died of dengue in Santa Rosa Public Hospital last week. In the school courtyard, her teacher paid tribute to the bright carrying gorilla as the children's staff and parents stood in stunned silence. Quisp was one of the victims of the outbreak sweeping through Pyra, the center of Peru's worst epidemic of the mosquito-borne virus on, on record. Peru has 137,539 dengue cases and registered at least 223 deaths, the highest mortality rate for the virus in the Americas, according to data released on Saturday from the Pan American Health Organization and Peru's National Center for Epidemiology, Disease Prevention and Control. Battered by rains and um, heavy rains and flooding in the recent months, Pyra has seen more than 40,000 cases and 69 deaths this year, at least a dozen of them children in the city of around a half a million. In April and May, Cyclone Yaku unleashed torrential rains in northern on northern Peru and the flood waters provided the idea of breeding grounds for Aedes aegypti mosquito so lucky if I pronounce some of this wrong um the vector for dengue as well as chikungunya and zika which is epidemic in the hot northern region near the border with Ecuador the first day my daughter had a high fever and abdominal pain then on the second and third day, she was vomiting and had diarrhea, said Lillian P Pizarro, whose seven-year-old Camilla was recovering in an emergency tent hospital erected on a sports field to deal with the overflow of dance patients. Under mosquito nets, the patients were cared for by medical specialists sent from the capital, Lima. Despite a contingency plan for the Deej outbreak, the demand has been much greater than the supply. Dr. Jennifer Gordros, a medic with the Prevention and Control Medicinic and Zoonotic Disease Directorate, told The Guardian. The caseload was already doubled that of 2017 after the last El Nino tore through Peru's coastal region, killing more than 100 people in floods and landslides and causing billions of pounds in damages. The city's public hospitals have been struggling to cope and the beds are available for only the most severe cases. Here we only take dense patients with alarm signs, bleeding, persistent abdominal pain, persistent vomiting, said Dr. Luig Zeta, 26, who was managed, who was manning triage along with two nurses at a maternity hospital as dozens of patients waited outside. We had many young people and good number of children. He had not seen so many ill people since the COVID um, pandemic, in which Peru had one of the highest, the world's highest mortality rates. Okay, it says, um, 
Empire Ura. 30% of the infected people are children, said Cesar Origo, an ombudsman for the region. Their, their cases can quickly become fatal. So we need pediatricians. It says on the outskirts of the city, dozens of dead sufferers have no choice but to stay home. And in hut made from plywood and woven matting, Juana Aquino, 66, and her nine-year-old grandson, Abraham, were both laid up with fever. She has been his carer since his her daughter and the boy's father were killed in a motorcycle accident five years ago. Another daughter, Giovanni Risco, was caring for both but was afraid to take them to the hospital, fearing they would be taken into intensive care. Neighbors were also sick. An elderly couple, Joseph Fa Rivas, 74, and, and Mario Moray, 76, had been confirmed were confined to their beds for two weeks, too, too weak to uh, move and barely able to eat, their family said. Okay, so uh, let's see. Cristobal Tamana, a community leader, estimated that more than half of the 640 households there had dinged. And I'm so lucky if I'm pronouncing that wrong because I've never heard of this before. It says the community, which began as a camp for flood victims six years ago, relies on tanks to pipe water into barrels stored in homes. These are uncovered and so are breeding grounds for the mosquito larvae. Timana said he had been appealing to the local authorities to fumigate their homes for two months, but to no avail. OK. It says an El, El, an El Nino weather phenomenon expected later this year will bring more heavy rain and flooding. The climate crisis has driven a rise in vector borne diseases. According to 2020, 2022 study, the increase in temperature is going to continue and disease like dengue are one of one of the results. Said Dr. Lewis Salak, Pampa, an infectionologist from Peru's National Health Institute who was treating patients in the tent hospital. We don't have to be fortune tellers to say that if we don't if we do not take this problem seriously will it could get worse well i mean a hey, and that's that's it on that i'm gonna grab a couple of scriptures uh because i wanted to go off into the curses of deuteronomy chapter 28 and one of them is um deuteronomy 28 and 21 and it's interesting i went off into um let me just go back real quick so this is deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 21 and I went off into the word uh, pestilence, right? It's uh, the bar, the bar. It says pestilence, moraine, pestilence, plague. Okay. And it gave a few. Um, some pretty uh, interesting um, precepts. And I'm going to look up this word moraine. It says moraine is an adequate term for various infectious diseases affecting cattle and sheep. The word originates from Middle English, marine or marine, as a derivative of Latin, more to die. The word marine, marine, much like the word pestilence, did not refer to specific disease, but rather was an umbrella term for what are now recognized as a number of different diseases with high mor morbidity and mortality, such as render pests, erysipelas, <laughs> food and mouth disease, anthrax, and streptococcus. So, all right, I'm pronouncing I know a lot of this stuff wrong. But it says um, an infectious disease, especially babesosis, <laughs> yeah, a plague, epidemic, crock blight. Anyway, I, I was just interested in that word, marine. But it's plague and, um, and uh, pestilence, right? So now when I went up into the Hebrew word for it, it says destruction, death, hence a plague. Now, he gave the precepts of um, Exodus 9 and 3, Leviticus 26 and 25, Deuteronomy 28 and 21 is what we're reading from, 2 Samuel 24 and 13, and it gave um, 1 Kings 8 and 37, and it also gave a, a, a scripture out of the, the Apocrypha, which is interesting, Sirach 39 and 29. So we're going to get all these, right? It's a lot. 
Okay, so let's go off into um I'm gonna go off in here with the, the apocrypha, right? Now this is on one of them. Exodus nine and three. One of them that they gave. Uh And this is going off into um, Egypt. And this was when the plagues was placed on um, the Egyptians. And it didn't um, affect the, um, the Israelites when Moses was, you know, going back and forth with Aaron, you know, to um, Pharaoh and telling them, hey, the Lord said, let my people go, this, 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 and this. And the Lord kept hardening Pharaoh's heart. And um, this is one of the things that happened. Verse um, three. Let me start at verse one. And it's also entitled the fifth plague, Egyptian um, livestock die. And Yahweh said unto Moses, go in, go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith Yahweh, God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. And, you know, um, you got a lot of these camps. Well, some of these camps, uh, you know, they, they'll say that we're, you know, we're not Hebrews, you know, but the scriptures clearly says that, you know, um, the Lord <laughs> sent Moses into Pharaoh to, tell, you know, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews. He's the God of the Hebrews, you know. Okay, it says, but uh, verse two, it says, for if thou refuse to let them go and wilt hold them still. And this is coming to the Americas. This is coming to all these um these nations, man. Behold, the hand of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camel, upon the oxen and upon the sheep. There shall be a, ve a very grievous moraine, you know, that's going off into those plagues. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is of the that is the children of Israel. So when you go into that account again, the Lord was was putting plagues on the Egyptians, and it wasn't happening to the Israelites. Now this is just an example of you know what was going down because when I think when you go into the Book of Psalms, it tells you how you know the cattle uh, you know they, they, that, it was nasty. It was a real, <laughs> those plagues was nasty, man. And uh, and a brother, he just um, and I seen this yesterday. Um, I think it's out in Texas with all those fish, thousands and thousands of fish was, um, washed up on a beach. And they said that the stench is so bad that, you know, people catch headaches from smelling it. And they're telling the people to stay away from the beach, stay out of the water. I wanted to do a lesson on that. I could probably go into it um, just to just check into it. But uh, let's move on, though. Let's go to Leviticus, that next precept that was in here, 26 and 25, right? Let's see. Uh, I want to see where to start at. Let me see what this title is. Blessing for obedience, basically. So if we were um, punishment for disobedience, basically, is what this is going into. OK, so it's basically it's kind of like a. Um, similar to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Uh, let me see where we want to start at, though. Let me get this verse 16. It says, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption and a burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And hey, these are some of these um the, the punishment, I mean some of the punishment that we're under, man. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. <laughs> so a hey, it, it, it's a it's a sevenfold on it now, man. Basically, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield or inc increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. And if ye walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues, see, upon you according to your sins. Not a good look, man. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. And if ye will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, 
Then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. Verse 25, the point. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the, of the, of the enemy. But it's the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, that brings the diseases, man. These plagues and pestilence, you know what I'm saying? The Lord is in control of, of those things, man. Matter of fact, they mention, um, let's get this one in the Apocrypha. Because they'll tell you that the Apocrypha doesn't matter, but a lot of these, um, they, they, they be having precepts that, that, that connect you to the Apocrypha. So you know that the Apocrypha is canon, man. These scholars know that the Apocrypha goes with the scriptures. They know it. But this is 39 and um, Sirach 39, also known as Ecclesiasticus, Sirach 39 and 29. Let me get 28. They're, they actually, I'm, I'm so, kind of surprised they actually use this. Sirach 39 and 28, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. And the time of destruction, they pour off their force and appease the wrath of him that made them fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. That's the that's the um, precept that they use. Thirty nine and twenty nine fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth, the wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment. And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So these are spirits that are going forth and causing certain, um, you know, uh, 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 hurricanes, tornadoes, these tsunamis, these storms, you know, that's these floods that's got that water sitting where these these mosquitoes and, and, and ain't, ain't no telling because you see America allowed um i think it was almost like a billion mosquitoes um genetically modified mosquitoes to be released into the um you know into the um certain communities or whatever you know supposedly to fight whatever disease they talking about i think um zika was one of them you wanted you know it, it was something that they was doing this was like maybe a year two years back when they released um i think it was like a billion I know it was in the millions, but they were, um, the so-called white man, he created a mosquito and released it into the, you know, the population, man, basically. So there's no telling what is really going on as far as these mosquitoes, man. That's why, you know, hey, watch out this summer, man. You know, it's almost best to just wear sleeves all damn summer, man. Wear, you know, um, pants and, and, and shirts with sleeves. Damn, they got to cover yourself up. To keep these mosquitoes from biting you or, or stinging you, man. Because you don't know what the hell Esau is doing. The scripture says never trust thine enemy, man. Okay, so let's get another precept that they had. They had 2 Samuel 24 and 13. Oh, this is um when David, um, David um ended up uh I'm trying to think, did he count? I think he counted Israel. But this is the Lord's judgment of David's sin. Yeah, he numbered the people of Israel. Yep, that's what happened. But check out, uh, this is, you know, an uh, indicator so we know with proof that it's the Lord. He's the one that's in control of, you know, the judgments that go out, whether it's by disease, it can be by famine. It can be, we just read all those in Sirach. Fire, hell, famine, death, teeth of wild beasts, you know what I'm saying? Scorpions, serpents, you know, the Lord, he can use anything to punish um, um, people, man. But this is 2 Samuel 24 and 13. So Gad came to David and told him and said unto him. Now, this is the punishment. He, he has a choice of three things. Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? So we know that one of the spirits of vengeance is famine. And the Lord is in control of those spirits. He created them for vengeance. Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? The Lord created um, enemies, man. He, he he can set anybody up against you. It can be your own family member. Your, your, it can be your closest family member. Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land. See? 
three days pestilence. So the Lord is in control of these things. Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. See? So you prefer to fall into the, the hands of the Lord because he's merciful. He's long-suffering. And this is what David done. He's like, man, let me just fall into the hands of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, because, hey, I don't want to I don't want to fall into the hands of man because men are, you know, they're, they're, they don't have the type of mercy that the Lord has, man. They can't they're not even capable of exhibiting it like that. OK, so let's see. We got another preset. First King. Eight and thirty seven. And I think this is when um, our King Solomon, he uh, dedicated the um, he was dedicating the temple. Solomon's prayer of dedication. Yep, that's what that was. OK, so. Let's see what some some of what he prayed for, though. Verse 37, it says, if there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar. See, the Lord can use these insects, you know, so to speak, to, to come through and, and eat all your damn crops up and, and make you die of a famine. Make you die of starvation. Right. It says, if their enemy besieged them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and to spread forth his hands towards this house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. So Solomon prayed a prayer where if any of those things came upon us as a people, we had to come together and pray. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, on um, fasting, you know, there was times where we had situations like, say, for instance, um, the book of Esther, where. You know, um, Amalek was trying to kill us all off. He, you know, they had that decree to kill all the, you know, the um, the Israelites, basically, in that region. The well, Southern Kingdom, um, I think, um, was in that region at the time. But um, they had, a, you know, this guy Haman, he had a decree to kill all the Israelites. And what did the, our people do? What did Esther do? She told them, hey, um, fast. We're going to fast for three days. All the people of Israel and the animals. So that we didn't eat, drink, the, the animals didn't eat, drink, you know, and there was uh, mourning and, and prayer towards Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And what did Yahweh do? Hey, he gave us the heads of our enemies, man. That's where you get the um the holiday of um, Purim, that celebration. You see what I'm saying? Because, that you know, the Lord, he blessed us, man, because we could have been wiped out and demolished. But the Lord gave us favor, you know, favor with Esther going before the king. And, and, you know, the, how the situation turned out, you know, you have to, um, you know, read through that to um, get that account. But I just wanted to touch on this, man. Um, we are under the curses. And, we're, you know, Israel is being awakened. The, the, you know, um, we're being awakened pretty quickly now. You know, the, the word is going out. But as we, uh, you know, further awaken and the more the more of us pray, you know, the Lord is hearing those prayers. And, you know, we're just it's closer to us. The time of us getting out of here. He's going to get us out of the hands of our enemies, man. That's that's the whole good news of the gospel. When you read um, Luke chapter one, Luke chapter one, it gives you the rundown. It gives you the whole breakdown, pretty much the whole blueprint as to why the Lord is actually coming. He's coming to save the children of Israel out of the hands of our enemies because we're scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And we have the worst of conditions, man. We have the worst of the situations, man. Here you go. You got our people living in places where water is being piped into barrels and, and it's just out in the open. Drinking water, cooking water, wash up water, whatever, you know, and, and these mosquitoes are laying at law. But that's the Lord, though. That's the Lord, man. And, and it's going to, you know, these particular things are going to continue until our Lord comes, man, because hey, we we definitely disrespected him. By breaking the covenant that we made with them, 
we're continuously going against them on a day to day basis as a people. We don't believe in them, you know, as a people, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying as a, as a whole. We don't want to rely on them. We go to our enemies for every damn thing. We don't call on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai for nothing. You know, you go to the so-called white man for his medicines. You don't pray to the Lord. And there's a situation with um, I'm trying to think who the, what's the uh, what his name is um, in the scriptures. Um, and he basically went to the physician before he called on the Lord. It's nothing wrong with a physician. But you have to call on the Lord. You have to know that it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He's in control of um, who, um, um, the wounding and healing. That's in Deuteronomy um, 30, 30, uh, what is that? Uh, no, not, th uh, yep. It's like you. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Let's get that real quick. It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See, it's the Lord that's in control of who lives and who dies and who's wounded and who's sick. So when you see people out here, man, and they're going through something, that's the Lord. You no, know? that's the Lord, man. So I just wanted to just touch on this, man. Um, we are the children of Israel. This is um, another proof that we are the children of Israel. I mean, and, and, and you know, our people in those areas, hey, they, they serve a lot of um, our people are into a lot of false idols. A lot of false gods. They're into um, real strong in the white Jesus. They're real strong into um, Catholicism and all these different religions, man, and all these different idols that they're worshiping. They're not calling on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So, you know, hey, we're being punished, man, as a people, and we're going to continue on being punished until this thing is over with, until our Lord comes. So, you know, it's, you know, repent to the Father Yahweh in the name of his son Yahweh Shai. That's the purpose of us doing these lessons. Repent. Repentance, repentance, repentance. That's the whole um, um, message that we're, we're, we're bringing forth, man, is to repent because the Lord is coming. And when he comes, you want to be separated from um, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man and all these um, heathen um, heathenist nations. You want to be completely away from them. You want to be into these scriptures. You want to be all about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. You want to be one of those people that sign and cry you know, you want to have that mark from Yahweh that, you know, that that basically that Passover type mark where the Lord will pass over you, you, you and your household, man. Because you don't want to be a part of the Egyptians when everything goes down. Like for real, for real, you don't want to be a part of this place, man. So um, that Micah 2 and 10, it says, come out of this place. But this is not our rest. Because it talks about how it will um, pollute you with a sore destruction. You know, roughly paraphrasing. So. Hey, like I said again, repent, man. You know, and then this is a sad situation because no, no one wants to see their children pass away. No one wants to see their children die. You know, but hey, the Lord, hey. What's that? Uh, matter of fact, let me get this real quick before I end out. Um, Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. See? That, that's that, hey, that's a bad situation, man. The Lord, like, hey, you forgetting about me? All right, I forget about you and your damn children. I'll set them up to, to, um, to, I'll set you up with the worst heartbreak ever. I'll take away the one, the, the, the very ones you love the most, the ones you cherish the most. See, so you're dealing with a a, a, a terrible power, man. There's a scripture that says, um, what's that? Uh, Hebrews 10 and 31. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You don't want to fall into the hands of Yahweh by Shemuel Messiah, man. You want to be protected by him. So with that, I pray that this lesson was edifying. Kwame Yashallah.